Afternoon Garage here. <laughs> Got all the uh, batteries charged. Now we're going to put it together in the pack, get it up in the car, test drive the car, and see if I was successful. Well, before we go put that battery back in the car, I wanted to share something with you. We made a chart of battery equivalents. Kind of shows, you know, which modules are the same. You know, so if you have a, a module that's defective, you know, you can go and get the correct one for it. It shows the polarity. It would be on the MBB side, which I keep calling the BMS here. Now everything's the same with these modules, with the exception of number three. I kind of told you earlier I was going to try to find out exactly which ones were similar to what. Three is definitely different. Okay, so here we have module number one. And uh, this has the minus side towards the BMS. And this is module three, that one that kind of hangs off the end. And uh, with the minus side towards the BMS. So, uh, as far as I know, the only difference is polarity, but now that in, in looking at these things, they're a little bit different. Has reinforcements down inside of here, and then where the other ones will mount up horizontally, you can see there's, there's no holes in there. You can see those holes are plugged. One last thing I wanted to talk about was if one of these cells fails in the entire pack of 315 cells why does the entire battery fail? Well, let me explain that to you. You can see here, this is actually where the cell had, this cell had failed and leaked out. And uh, it's definitely got some liquid that actually kind of comes out. We found out that was kind of corrosive. So now here I'm going to demonstrate exactly what happens when you do have a cell that's failed. Now this, this cell here is probably uh, less than half a volt. This one here I've kind of clamped it with some C-clamps here, and then this is actually a good cell here. These are in series, so it's going through this battery and through here. And you can see it's actually passing some current. What happens when you load this thing down? Keep an eye on that meter there. You can see the thing almost drops to, well, six millivolts. And then uh, it takes a little bit to recover. So you can see what happens is, when this thing fails and it gets loaded, this battery actually acts as an open. It doesn't allow any current to pass from this series cell to that series cell. So what happens is, you know, it's the argument with the weakest link. Well, when you have a link that fails in a chain, the whole thing fails. Because this is essentially open. It's an open circuit. No electricity can flow from this series battery to that series battery. And that's why this is such a big problem. So without any further delay, let's get started. Ready to drive this car. Well, I got all the battery modules in here now and uh, I've torqued down these bolts pretty good. One thing to make sure is there's a lot of stuff to align here. There's this top plate, each individual battery module, cooling plate here, and uh, the last battery module on the bottom and of course, the holes that hold the nuts to hold the whole thing together. So uh, just remember when putting this thing back together, make sure you uh, wear your gloves here, your leather gloves so you don't get electrocuted. And uh, another thing to note is I really hope you took a good video of where all these bus connectors were when you took it apart. And if you didn't, here it is for you. information on that video make sure we put these bus bars 
back where they go. Make sure we get this battery wired up the way it came out. One thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure the voltage of each individual module. Make sure they really haven't deviated from the 23.3 volts uh, where I tested them. When bolting these connections back together, make sure there were some screws that had washers on them and some fasteners that just didn't have anything on it. It was just a bare screw, just a bare torque screw. So go back and refer to that video that you made. some help for this one. So if you don't have a home charger that's 220, this one here is 110, plugs right into your outlet. This will allow you to charge your battery. It's gonna take about twice the amount of time, so maybe 10, 12 hours. But it comes with the same connector that the home ones do. So it allows you to plug it right in and uh, charge your battery like I am right in my garage. Good, I think everything's gonna work fine. Got to remember to fill that low temperature coolant back up. So uh, this is a two liter engine from, it's a two liter turbocharged engine from uh, the Saturn Sky or Pontiac Solstice. So I guess I have two of these engines now. And um, this is, uh, they run Dexcool and uh, I can see that the, the stuff that I got out of it was kind of a pink color. So I'm pretty sure that um, this is what it is. I buy a concentrate and dilute it with distilled water and uh, reservoir is right here. Fill her up. Getting anxious to take it for a drive. That's pretty good. And running the codes, I get uh, BOA7B, which is a general battery control module failure. So uh, I'm going to go and race these codes here. Wait for the check engine light to turn off. There we go, just shut off. All right, all buzzing, all ready to go. Let's drive this thing. You know, this thing seems to be going on all right. Um, driven about. I don't know, 30 miles or so, and the range says it's got about eight miles there. So we're getting close to zero, no check engine lights. I'm about to be a really happy guy here. We'll wait till it hits that magic number, see if the generator kicks in like it should. So far, I'm really happy.
Zero charge, no check engine light. Back to the scene of the crime where I did that burnout and, well, police kind of busted me. You can see now, it's fall time. Happy to have this car done at least before winter. As I said in my first video about this car, when I first saw this thing, I was completely amazed. I'm still enamored with the, with the looks and the styling and uh, just never grows old with me. And moving on to the back end, it looks just as good back here as it does up there. So one might ask, would you do it again? Definitely, I would definitely do it again. Not only was it a good learning experience uh, with my first electric car, but uh, boy, the styling and the looks, the attention that I got from this car is unbeat. I usually build replica cars, like I said in my first video in the series of this, but uh, well, you just don't see these cars anywhere. We're we'll working on a few other cars. I'm gonna go back to the Solstice, and by request, I'm gonna do some more work on that car. And uh, I have a few other cars lined up that I'm gonna do some pretty major things to. So, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. If you learned something out of this whole series, just hit that like button. It really helps me out. And if you know somebody who likes this kind of content, just let them know. Till next time.